morning, everybody. Welcome to our webinar today on creative careers. And uh, we really, really are excited to have you come on board with us this morning. I am very, very excited to be your host for today. My name is Shiko Monoku. I am part of the faculty at the Africa Digital Media Institute, uh, where we uh, pride ourselves in being the premier uh, institution in uh, creative media training. And I'm very excited because today you're going to hear from every side of uh, those of us that are involved in uh, training for creative media. You will hear from faculty, those that train and who are also out there practicing in the industry. You will also get to hear from a parent who has trusted us with their child and uh, whose child has successfully been here at the Africa Digital Media Institute. And you'll also be hearing from one of our students who's currently here, and he'll tell you about his own experience uh, studying at the Africa Digital Media Institute. I know that we are still logging on and we want to just continue allowing people to come on. We are sorry we've started a few minutes later than we had planned. Uh, and we are trusting that everybody will soon be on board so that we can be able uh, to take off. But as we do that, I, I will formally introduce the panel. But uh, before I do, we want to have a small exercise just to get our minds uh, 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 truly, truly focused on what we're doing today. So please join on Menti. Uh, dot com, mentimeter.com. And as you join there, you can join it on any of your devices. Okay, so you can join it on your phone, you, know, you can join it on your iPad or laptop or PC. Uh, so when you go to menti.com, there's some questions we'd like you to answer. So we're just going to have a small icebreaker as we get set for today's uh, 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 morning uh, session. So on Mentimeter, you will see there'll be some, we're just gonna ask three questions. So I'd like you to go there and uh, join. And once you do, uh, we we'll want you to describe your word in one week. How has your, your, your week in one word? How has your week been? All right, so you can maybe tell us that. How has your week been, All right? So you can uh, let us know. How has your week been? So go to menti.com and the code is two three, sorry, three five seven eight nine two one five for you to be able to uh, log on to do the exercise. So the code is uh three five seven eight nine two one five. It's been sent there, it's in the chat. So please uh, do that. Once you're there, we we'll begin to see some movements. The code is right there. So please describe your week in one word. How has your week been? It's Friday. So you can let us know. How has your week been? Aha, uh -huh. challenging, busy, amazing. Oh, somebody has had an amazing week, a productive week. Great. Uh, we are really, uh, let's see, who else is going to tell us something about their week before we get into the matters of the day and as we allow the, the entire team to come on. Ah, oh, somebody has had a lot of production. Someone has had very tiring. Somebody's week has been uh, challenging, you know. Uh, uh, we're glad that we're able to be here and just uh, hope that they, after this, your week will end on an up note. So let us get to see what else we have. Okay, so I hope everybody has been able to log on. Uh, let's go to the next question. Very good, very good. Uh, let's go to the next question. How has your week been was our first one. Then when you hear the term creative careers, what comes to mind? When you hear the term creative careers, what comes to mind for you? 
uh, what comes to mind for you on creative careers? What comes to mind? <laughs> Somebody says hobbies. <laughs> Okay, that's interesting. Hobbies. Uh -huh. For one person, they hear creative careers, and for them, it's just all about hobbies. Exciting careers. I like that one. Exciting careers. Okay. Uh huh. When you hear the term creative careers, what comes to mind? Music, movies, DJing. <laughs> all right. Uh, let's see. Uh, when you hear the term creative careers, because today we're here to talk about um, pursuing creative careers. What comes to mind when you hear the term creative careers? We have, uh, I have three responses so far. Uh, let's see. Okay, very good. Careers that bring out the creativity of someone. Uh-huh, good. Uh, exciting careers that that is uh, another one somebody else thinks that they are exciting careers and indeed um we do uh here at ADMI we do believe they're exciting careers when we make our promise to those that come here that we want them to turn passion to profession it is because we believe that as they come here as they're turning the passion to profession it will be a uh, an exciting career Okay, very good. Thank you so much. I think we have one more before then we can uh, move on. What are you looking forward to learning in this webinar? And here now, we want, we want to set our expectations for today. What are you looking to learn? So just uh, let us know. Let us know. What are you looking to learn today in today's webinar? Let us know. Uh -huh. What are you looking to learn today? I trust that everybody who, though those who have joined a bit later, we are doing a small uh, exercise. And uh, to join, you just go to menti.com on your browser, on any of your device. And then you can use the code that it is on the screen 35789215 to be able to show. and then you can be able to give us a uh, tell us what it is yeah. I request that you please uh, mute our our devices so that we are able to So we request that you please ensure uh, uh, we all muted. So what are you looking forward to learning? So here from parents, somebody wants to know about career options. Somebody wants to know about how to monetize their passion. Oh, I like this one, how to support my child. Somebody else wants to have information on creative careers as well as to come up, you know, understand some career options. Very good. So you are uh -huh. then also to hear about people's experience in the in the um, creative careers. Aha. Uh -huh. And you see sometimes hear about the prospects that are there. Very good. Well done. Ah, oh, strategies for networking. Okay, very good. Experiences from our team. Yes, you will definitely be hearing from that. And um, that is great. Uh, well done. I think I have captured, I have gotten to see um, from everybody what uh, their expectations are. And we are so grateful that you have uh, been able to indulge us in this uh, exercise. So we would like you to, um, okay, very, very good. So today, um, as we start, we would like to just um, introduce the panel briefly, though I will allow each of them to introduce themselves. As I said earlier, uh, I'm your moderator for today. My name is Shiko Munuku. I am uh, part of the faculty at the Africa Digital Media Institute. I'm also a career coach, specifically on the soft skills area. 
this is an area that I'm very passionate about. Um, we'll be talking a little about that at some point. I am very excited because we are also joined by one of our parents, Mr. Godfrey Gishuki, who also happens to be a career coach. And I'll allow him to introduce himself further. Uh, then we have uh, one of our students, Bran Wilu. Bran is a student uh, in our FTV department. Uh, currently in his semester three, he'll also see something about himself. And I also have my colleague here, Mr. Benjamin Waisaka, who is not only part of the faculty at ADMI, uh, he's also uh, one of our lead animators uh, in the country. He's in animation and motion graphics, and he'll also introduce himself. So how do we do this? I think we will start with you, Mr. Gishuke. Uh, you can maybe just give a brief introduction about yourself. Uh, we are uh, please unmute. Uh, I think you're still muted. All right. Uh, good morning, everyone. Yes, good morning. Shifa, you can hear me. Yes, I can. Thank you. All right. Okay. Uh, my name is Godfrey Yishoke, as uh, you can see on the screen. Um, I am in the media space somewhat and in other spaces. I am the chair and the CEO of Elevate TV. I'm a pastor. I'm a lecturer. I, I lecture students at Jomo Kenyatta University in the School of Business and Entrepreneurship. I teach entrepreneurship economics. Uh, these are things I do on the side. Uh, <laughs> by, but my day-to-day -day job is uh, supporting Elevate TV. Uh, working with a team of about uh, 13, 14 staff. Uh, we run the media. I also host a program called the Gigi Report. And, um, and then when I'm not uh, doing TV stuff, uh, I'm supporting the pastoral work. And uh, I have a family. My son graduated from ADMI. So I guess that's why I'm here. Uh, and uh, I have a long career, uh, you know, uh, in management, business, I've been involved in running colleges. So I think I have some little background to bring to this table. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you so much. You absolutely do. <laughs> we can talk about so much. Uh, not only are you a parent with us, but really you're also in that creative media space yourself. And uh, it's a real pleasure to have you with us today. Uh, let me go to Brian. Before I go to my colleague, <laughs> introduce yourself, Good Brian. morning. Good morning. Uh, my name is Brian Wilu. I'm a student at ADMI, currently pursuing diploma in film and TV semester three. Uh, I'm also a crew member of ADMI. Yes, and uh, ADMI is where to be, changes passion to profession. That is music to my ears. When I hear them say passion to profession and EDMI is a place to be because you're currently in what semester, Brian? I'm in semester yeah. three. Yes. 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 Very good. So you heard him say he's part of the crew. What he's telling you, I don't just study when they need a professional crew. I'm also the one they call. <laughs> that tells you the kind of guy we're talking to. Thank yes. you very much, Brian. It's a pleasure to have you. And uh, now my colleague, Benjamin. Uh, Mr. Waisaka, please introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi. Um, as she said, I'm Benjamin. Uh, you're yeah. yeah, you can hear me? Yes, we can. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Benjamin Waisaka is the name, uh, faculty at ADMI. I'm also a digital content creator that is in terms of animation motion graphics, games, and uh, just that whole space, of, uh, including virtual productions. And I'm also an Autodesk certified professional. Okay, and you forgot to see one of the best in the country. <laughs> <laughs> okay, very good. Thank you very much, Benjamin. It's a pleasure to have you too. So uh, in this part of our, uh, of our webinar, we're really gonna just have a discussion with each one of our panelists today. And then I would like you, our very valued audience, to please type any of the questions you may have for any of them. And then once we're done with our discussion, we will then take your questions. So please type any questions you may have in the chat 
and then we'll be sure to uh, field them to whoever it is that you'd like to answer it. So feel free to use the chat to type your questions. So I will want to start with you, Brian. Uh, I, yes. Let's start with the youngest. <laughs> <laughs> uh, because there may be a young man, young woman that is watching us today and um, you know, is wondering, you know, should I go to a place like ADMI? Um, what, let's start from the conversation you had to have with your family for you to be able to uh, come and study film and television production. Uh, how was that experience for you? Uh, for me, I would say it was a good experience because my dad is in the industry oh. and I wanted to follow his path, his footsteps. So yeah. I decided, let me give it a shot. And I had an interest in cameras yeah. uh, because I remember my first camera was a Sony Handycam. Yeah. And I used to shoot everything with it, even if it was low quality. Yeah. <laughs> That's where I gained the... Uh, confidence on what I want to do and why I want to pursue film and TV in ADMI. And ADMI yeah. is basically known as the best uh, media school in yeah. Kenya, as you're speaking. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, so for you, what would you say um, in the time you've been with us, because now you're in semester three, meaning you've already got two semesters under your belt. Yes. Um, what would you say has been the key thing you have learned that maybe you did not uh, in, know about film and television production? Is there something um, major that you'd say you have uh, discovered? The softwares, uh, uh -huh. the Adobe, Adobe Premiere Pro, Photoshop. You know, yes. uh, in the industry, uh, let me talk about the people who are not in the industry. Uh, they yes. think when given a video or when you shoot a video, they think yes. you just go take the video then send it to them. It's not like that. You have to <coughs> take them to the softwares and then now give it to them. So yeah. ADMI has taught me a lot uh, about the softwares, about the cameras, and ADMI has each and every equipment that I need to change my passion to profession. Uh -huh. You know, in the world we're living in today, everybody thinks they can take uh, excellent videos or photos yes. because we can do it on our phone. But the truth is that there's so much more that goes to a good production. Before Mr. Geshuki can have um, you come on board and be the camera operator in his uh, in his TV station, then there are certain qualities you must have. And uh, I'd like you to just mention a little because um, you know there are some misconceptions that are out there, you know, about this uh, field. What would you say some of them are? Uh, one of them is uh, delivering a video or photos. Uh, right. You'll find a client, you go for work, and then a client gives you work for today, and he or she wants the videos and photos tomorrow. Yes. He or she forgetting that uh, we should edit the videos or the pictures and send them to them, maybe in yes. a week's time or in three days' time. So they think it's very easy work. They think holding a camera is the easiest work ever. <laughs> Which it is not. It is not. It is yes, not. yes. Yeah, and one of the things we try to do here at ADMI, uh, of course, I've met you in a class uh, because I teach Career Launchpad, which is our soft skills uh, training course. And um, I, it is very exciting for me, first of all, to see you here, <laughs> sitting there and, and uh, being part of the panel and sharing your thoughts. But I want you to talk a little about the kind of training you're receiving here at ADMI both the technical training and the soft skills training what should you talk what did you say about them uh, i'll start off with the technical training uh, in admi we have each and every equipment you have the cameras you have the lighting you have the sound equipment so uh, our lecturers take them bring them to class and they do it practically to us compared to other schools whereby teachers just explain them using uh, videos on the laptops and everything and they also give us the cameras to see how to use them and how you can handle them uh -huh. so it's been very practical for you yes it's very very practical uh heading yeah. on to the soft skills uh in admi uh we are taught uh how to communicate with someone how to handle uh, people outside apart from school how to handle your colleagues and everyone yes okay all right, now you've told us you're part of the crew. 
here at yeah. uh, ADMI. <laughs> so please explain that a little bit. Huh? Uh, uh -huh. because they know it's not just uh, the work you do in class. There is yes. what you've gotten to do outside. So talk a little bit about that. Oh, I'll start off by saying one should be so committed yeah. because it's a creative career. Mm -hmm. uh, and at the end, we all want to benefit. I want to benefit. And you as my lecturer, you'll want to see me excel. Yeah. Yeah. So when I decided to join the crew is because of my passion in cameras, my passion in everything that is in the media industry. Yeah. That's why I wanted to join the crew. And as well, the crew mentors you for the outside world. Yeah. So you what get to know when you're done at school, yeah. you know what is happening outside there. Okay, very good. What would you say are some of the projects you've worked on in your time here? Uh, I've done a lot. Like in a, uh, last month, we did our short film. Okay. It's known by the, I was the producer. It yeah. was called Goose. Uh, I've worked with ADMI in covering conferences, uh -huh. and ADMI has also given me an opportunity. I've worked yeah. with the World Screen Organization. ADMI has given me a lot of opportunities, yeah. and I'm grateful about that. Okay, so one last one uh, for yeah. you, Brian, for now. Huh? Um, why did you decide to go into this area? You know, um, why did you decide to go into uh, film and television production and a career in the creative uh, media? What inspired you to go into it? As I started off by saying, my dad yeah. is in the industry. Yeah. He mentored me. Yeah. He showed me the way and how these things handled. Because I remember back then, he used to take yeah. me for shoots and yeah. show me how it's done. Yeah. And also, I want to become among the best wildlife filmmakers in Kenya. Yeah. Yes. All right. OK, very good. Very, very good. So what would you say to a young person that, um, you know, is uh, probably doesn't have the kind of parents you have who are in the industry, but wants to get into this kind of uh, career? You know, what would you say to them? Uh, First of all, I'll tell them, show them, push push yourself to the limit until they get. So you know, parents, if you show them you're interested in something, they will give it a chance okay. for you to do it. Uh, another okay. thing, uh, yeah. if you want to join ADMI, come to ADMI, uh, get everything, the documents, take them back to your parents, explain to them everything, yeah. and tell them that this is your this is your career and this is what you want to focus on because uh, sorry to say most african parents think uh, their children should become engineers doctors forgetting that this is also a career yeah. and people have made money out of it people are growing yeah. yes so push yourself to the limits okay all right thank you Ryan. thank you so very much now no, no. Mr. Okay, now Mr. Gishuki, we're going to come to you because we've just had the young man tell us <laughs> that we should uh, go to our parents with the with everything, the documents from EDMI, and tell them this is my career. <laughs> Was that the kind of conversation you had with your with your child? And maybe you can start by just telling us uh, what course did your child do at Africa Digital Media Institute, and how did the conversation go? that uh you know encourage you to support them to actually come and pursue a creative career uh i request that you please unmute okay all right yeah thank you very much Chico. um <clears throat> yeah your question um my son jerry jerry actually um you know he, he's uh, he's an amazing guy yeah. he had tried many things so before he landed at ADMI he had tried out um, almost a year in uh, clothing designs then he also tried out uh, one semester uh, animation at uh, this college called I think Chantal or something right. um, but he wasn't quite settling so but when he found ADMI um, because all along, he, he was always playing around with the idea of editing, creating music uh, at home. So yes. I, I guess things just connected. So he was very, very happy. Uh, he came to us and said, 
I remember he had dropped off the other two colleges. So, uh, okay. well, now, that that is interesting. Not to say that my son is uh, is not a serious guy uh, because he has proved otherwise. I, I think he was trying to find his path. So uh, when yeah. he found uh, ADMI, he came and said, this is where I want to study. This is the course I want to do. Uh, yeah. Sound uh, production. Uh, we said, you have it. So that's the conversation we had. Okay. <laughs> and you were, uh, was it easy for you to say, okay, <laughs> do this one? Or were there any misconceptions you may have had about the, about the, the you know, um, creative uh, careers, creative careers in the creative media industry? Um, <clears throat> no, not really. I, I, I am not skeptical. I, I think um given my <laughs> wide experience in many things yeah. um and my tinkering with uh, with the media video production actually i used to have <laughs> I, I think this is where jerry picked up the ideas uh yeah. when i was we were studying uh, with my family in the uk i set up a home studio and i bought cameras so i used to do video production i would shoot and then come and edit uh, and all that premiere pro the older versions and uh, so I think Jerry watched that happening. So I guess he was really following in the footsteps of his uh, curious dad. Uh, <laughs> so like, just like Brian, I, I think uh, these viruses, once they get into the family, they begin to spread. <laughs> the creative bug, when it bites one person, uh, it uh, becomes a problem. So I guess you guys at ADMI are on the receiving end of... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Uh, um, when, so, yeah. So yes, but uh, Jerry is definitely very creative and curious. So I guess that was also uh, uh, attractive to him. Yes. Uh, so, but I didn't have any any challenge with um, allowing him to explore his uh, potential. Um, yeah. I think in my family we have an open, um, you know, minded uh, approach to career. If you want to pursue a certain direction, uh, we, we we give you the full uh you know permission to to pursue what you really want uh, to pursue. Of course, we discuss it. There are sug suggestions, but more often we do not want to dictate to our children what careers they can pursue. Now, fortunately, right now that's now already done. Uh, you know, my daughter is in uh, construction management. Jerry is in uh, media sound engineering and uh, the other one is in hr so everybody pursued what they pursued what they really wanted and we supported them wow that is so refreshing to hear uh because i know as brian mentioned a lot of um uh, we in the older generation like in my time you could not go and tell your parents that you want to go and do music you know, they would be horrified, you know, they would be, uh, because first of all, they didn't have too many examples of people who had gone ahead uh, that were doing well, being able to take care of themselves and uh, live a decent life. And uh, so they'd tell us, go and pursue any degree. As long as you get a degree, you're okay. Then you go and do anything else, you know. So I think it is quite helpful when the parent themselves is um, is a creative or has experience or interest in that area. However, many parents do not. And Mr. Geshoki, I'd like you to speak to a parent who's listening to us today, who um, may have like a setup like yours where you have two children who are pursuing very conservative uh, careers and then you have one that uh, is the creative that says for me I want to do music I want to do sound I want to be a filmmaker um, maybe just speak to them about how do you manage that and ensure that this child receives the love and support they need and the guidance even if you may not yourself understand this entire industry. Um, all right. Of course, we all know that, um, you know, parents who have dictated careers for their children uh, often uh, end up really on the losing end because uh, uh, the young guys have a way of, uh, they will uh, follow your instructions, go do that bachelor's, 
in uh, in um, education or something like that or whatever. I, I, I mean, I even know people whose uh, children did medicine and then they dumped the thing and went to do acting and uh, film. So I think a parent has to be very clear that they uh, that their children are really following in areas where they are not only interested, but they have that creative edge. Um, and I think for me, I would encourage parents to, of course, to seek some career guidance for their children or rather their children. They should encourage their children to do career uh, coaching. So which and there are technical, uh, you know, programs for that. Um, so that then you, you can see children who are very lean, very much on the creative side of things. They, they are artistic or they are musically talented, for example. I mean, some of these careers just manifest very early. Um, that's potential out there. And, and especially in, some, in the creative uh, arena, especially, it attracts uh, children who are um, most of the time a little bit, uh, you know, introverted. So some of the instruments, but most of the music artists are actually very serious introverts. Masi yeah. Masika is a friend of mine, and she she's a very serious introvert. But when they get on the stage, everything changes. So they work harder, they prepare longer, they they are very very good in uh, preparing themselves uh, because they are afraid of the crowd. So they kind of compensate, and and they end up becoming very very ex uh, 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 successful. However, it, it's not never very apparent. So I would tell parents that um, you need to to. Uh, Explore more, and so be um, be uh, be able to guide your children or encourage them to seek that career guidance. But there's no reason uh, to dictate uh, career direction for your child, uh, because perhaps when they grow up, then they, you know you will see they have taken a completely different direction. Um, but you know, life is interesting. So I studied engineering for my bachelor's, and then I went into marketing, and then sales. I did MBA. I am now a social scientist, not uh, an engineering uh, scientist, uh, or I'm still in the science space, uh, doing strategy management, and that's my specialty. But then I also discovered it's also tied to the fact that I'm a, a go-getter. I'm a, an outgoing person, very verbal, very quick, uh, you know, to speak and to think, and that's how I'm able to survive in the TV industry, for example, producing our show. Uh, without the mm -hmm. uh, the other background, so I guess maybe I fall in a slightly different category. So children come out with all kinds of things. So I encourage parents to explore together with their children. Uh, what are the possibilities, and if they can support them, absolutely there's no reason why they shouldn't succeed. Oh, I like that. Thank you so much for that. You know, the reality is that for all of us in today's world, we are really having to learn as we go along. We're told that the illiterate of the, this century now is not going to be somebody who cannot read and write, but it's somebody who, can, who cannot learn new things. Somebody who's not willing to relearn and, and learn some stuff. And so even in careers, we are told that many of the careers that we have now in another 20 to 50 years may have been phased out. So I think for parents, there is a call to actually also ensure that we become more um, digitally savvy. We begin to uh, st uh, get some more information about current careers that are here so that we can also not only future proof our own careers that encourage a child that wants to go into a career that seems futuristic as far as impact is going to be because the world today especially post-covid has really uh, been run by the creative media industry I mean they're the ones who kept us sane when we were stuck at home <laughs> during lockdown uh, they're the ones who kept the as connected during that period. So both creative media and creative tech is very, very important. So maybe a final one for me, uh, actually I have two more, <laughs> but one of them, would you think that currently, especially with all the experience you have, the vast experience you have in uh, various industries, uh, do you think the societal um, views about the creative media industry are slowly changing? to accommodate the, this, especially here in Africa and specifically here in Kenya? 
Um, yeah, that, that's happening. I think clearly uh, the media space has been expanding and opportunities in that area expanding. Um, but I'm also old school in many ways. I still believe in the old careers, uh, you know, the engineering, the, the, the teaching, the nursing, uh, medical law. Um, and, and so, I, I, I mean, <laughs> interestingly, yes. I have studied literally everything, theology, uh, you know, everything. So in between. So I believe, and, and this is something I really would like she called to share with parents and also the students uh, yes. if they are logged in, that don't just drill one hole. The British Petroleum uh, Company prospecting succeeds because they drill very many holes. So I'm a research scientist. I'm actually at the tail end of my, um, you know, PhD. So wow. that's a hole I've drilled there. So I, I I can buttress my, you know, to I mean, you know, I'm past fifty obviously. So yes. uh, so I'm not retiring anytime soon. I have very very many options. I've created very many options, and I'm an entrepreneur. So my encouragement, while the media and all that is a very very good space, it's growing. That's not the only thing you should invest in. Uh, if you can be uh, an entrepreneur, please do. If you can also go and study uh, programming and coding, please do. So you can have several careers simultaneously. Uh, and I think that's where parents, I think that's the reason why a lot of parents are skeptical because, and I will tell you, uh, my son right now is struggling. Uh, he has been in and out of two jobs. Right now he's in the middle of a transition. And um, and I can understand, you know, because the media industry is very fluid. Uh, and the big boys, you know, make all the money, then entry level guys, you know, struggle. In fact, like, for example, Brian has to come and beg me to give him a job <laughs> as a cameraman. But then you see, for Brian, I would like him to be both a cameraman, to edit, to screen write. For example, screen writing, there's a very huge shortage. shortage very true. Or people can screen write. Yeah. So, so you need more time skills in that space so so that then you can be handy. Uh, yeah. So I think that's what I would say. Of course, uh, in Africa, the, the opportunities are expanding in every direction. So I think parents should be assured that this space is going yeah. to grow. It's going to be uh, very recruitive if it is not already so. So I think no, 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 no reason to be afraid. Uh, but you can still be a lawyer and, uh, and uh, a media expert at the same time. So there's no need to be afraid to expand into all those spaces. Wow, very interesting. Uh, drill several holes. <laughs> and uh, one of the things indeed that we share with our students is the need for versatility. And as you've correctly said, for somebody like Brian, he actually is able to do all those things. Um, I know in his course, he learned how to edit. He won't just be behind a camera. He can, after he finishes shooting, he can also come and um, be the person that edits the work. He also is the person that can, if he need be, he'll also be the person that does the production design. So I think what I'm hearing from you is that in whatever career you're in, is to ensure you are truly versatile. You don't just stick in one comfort zone, but be open to grow, be hungry for more, you know, to keep learning and learning and growing your skill. And the more you can offer, the more value you can offer, the more uh, people are going to be, uh, the more people who will need your services, you know, the more people will be able to also, and the more they need your services, the more money you're able to make, you know. So thank you for that. And, you know, I know that uh, the entertainment industry is still on a recovery mode after COVID, you know, but we do know from what we are seeing uh, that there is a lot of hope. There is a lot of hope. Um, I like to use Nollywood, for example, because I know they are a major contributor. The last time I had checked, uh, maybe somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but they were actually the second uh, contributor to the GDP of Nigeria. I mean, so, and I know that we are also growing here. The creative media industry here is growing and the opportunities are vast, as long as you're really, really the best. So thank you so very much, uh, Mr. Gishuke. I know we'll come back to you. I know there'll be some comments or questions for you uh, from the audience. 
allow me to now invite uh, Brian, uh, Benjamin, uh, my colleague. Benjamin, uh, you are in the industry. <laughs> so it's not theoretical. You live there, you work there, and it is from there that you come to the classroom to teach our students here at the Africa Digital Media Institute. So for you, what would you say has been your experience? First of all, just a brief uh, overview of your journey into the creative media industry yourself. Uh, well, my, my journey has been one very long one. Uh, I, I started from the year 2000, I think, is when I started looking at the whole issue about animation. We didn't even have schools back then. Uh, it was just studios here and there. Animation was still growing, in fact. But I can say with leaps and bounds, we are, we are somewhere. I like where we are. I did expect we could come this far, this fast. Uh, when I started training, the only thing, the one thing that made me start to think of training was because we didn't have enough artists here. Even the companies that were making this, software, for example, Autodesk, um, I could talk to them and they were telling me, but you don't have the numbers. You don't have the necessary numbers for us to come in and start making, giving incentives and all that. So I started training from that point of view. And by now, we are having a major industry happening. We have an association uh, currently going on. Last year, one of our association members, that is Andrew Kagia, uh, made an animation called Terra Storm, which went to the Oscars. Uh, okay. This year, we are having Netflix sponsor quite a number of people to go have different trainings all over the world. And it's awesome. I would say we are in that golden age. It's, it's a really good... <laughs> people are making a livelihood out of it because that's what parents want to know. Are you? Can you feed yourself from this? And the answer is yes. It's one of those industries that uh, Shiko, for example, in the animation industry, during COVID, it's one industry that didn't stop. Because for us, we don't need uh, locations. Everything is created virtually. So it yeah. actually didn't stop. The only thing that kept people sane through COVID was entertainment. Yeah. That's where the creative <laughs> industry now came in. DJs yeah. were making songs from the tops of mountains. There's a DJ called Suraj. <laughs> he made uh, a whole DJ set at the Kitmuka in Kisumu. Yeah. having uh, endorsements from Red Bull and all that. So it's one of those industries that really didn't stop that much. It yeah. wasn't really affected that much. And uh, it's it's a growing career. It's, a, it's an area to really look in. So my journey has been fantastic. I can't complain. Yeah. Things yeah. are getting better as we move along here. Yeah. Oh, wow. You know, you just reminded me during COVID at ADMI, we had two sets of people. We had the set of the, the Benjamins in animation, the graphic designers who could not handle the amount of work that they had. <laughs> they were overwhelmed with demands. Huh? And the editors too, because all of a sudden the churches, the uh, organizations realized they needed content. They needed uh, to be online. And then we had the other ones where, um, of course, where they had to shut down productions and uh, not much was happening. So it was a very interesting time to see the different sides of the creative uh, media industry and creative tech have different uh, experiences during COVID. But indeed, you guys are the guys that made a lot of money <laughs> during that yeah, period. Yeah, we, we, are usually, we are usually afraid of making that comment, but the COVID time was uh, the best time for us. Actually. <laughs> we, we shy away from talking about it. It is, we, we can, we know, we know, we know, we can't sell. <laughs> the more they work, the more the money. That's how it should work. Yeah. So Benjamin, you know, um, let's, I'm a parent, let's assume. I, my son is, uh, I am a parent, but let's assume my son was old enough and was Brian's age. And I'm looking and seeing and asking now, what is the future of this industry? Because um, now we are past COVID. Now here we are. Uh, everybody's back to their work trying to make a living in this kind of an economy that we're in today. Uh, when you look into the future, what do you see? What, what would you say that you see as the, you know, the future opportunities in the creative media industry, uh, you know, generally, and also even very specifically to your own experience? Uh, I would first of all say I'm even afraid to look because it's extremely bright. <laughs> I like that. It's one of those areas that even government is coming in now. Uh, funding is coming in even from government, from quotas we didn't even expect. Um, yeah. Right now, the number of careers that are coming out of it are just massive. Uh, yeah. From screen, that is a, 
uh, from TV to the internet. You see what how uh, uh, YouTube has disrupted the uh, traditional broadcasters. People are throwing their uh, opportunities there. Uh, you look at the kind of technology that is coming out. It is getting cheaper. It is getting faster. Uh, half the softwares we are using now are actually free. Okay, yeah. some of the best ones, and it, it's it, the the sky is the limit. You'll notice, like for example, if you look at Hollywood, they are coming back. Their stories have kind of died down. They are coming back to Africa. Everything yeah. is Africa centric, Africa yeah. center. And yeah. since Africa has a bigger population of young people, okay, I believe by 2025, 2050, we're going to be about 40, 42% of the world is actually going to be African, okay, yeah. and the young. So the West yeah. is aging, Africa is just growing into it. So the opportunities yeah. are massive in all industries, in fact. From yeah. architectural visualization, product design, to yeah. sound, to film, everybody yeah. is currently coming to Africa. It was just the other month that yeah. Xbox is trying to come into Africa and get games done by Africans for Africans. Yeah. And it's, it's a wonderful time to be alive. It's a wonderful time to be in the creative industry. So, And people yeah. are starting to understand. There's more awareness now. So yeah. it, it's, it's really growing. It's really growing, yeah. Oh, very good. Uh, you know, um, indeed, there is no better time to be young, to be Black, specifically African, <laughs> and to be in the creative media, creative tech industry. Um, you know, in fact, when you look, even when you look in the music, all of a sudden, there seems to be this uh, rush um, even by Hollywood and uh, the powers that be um, for African artists, collaborations with African artists. Uh, we are seeing a great growth even here with the kind of people who want to come and perform here. If we're going to talk about music and sound, uh, you know, if we're going to talk about film as well, we're beginning to see the Denzel um the Idris Elbers and the rest coming to Africa to set up studios here. So we're not just uh, um, hoping that that is the case, but indeed it is Africa's time. And you've correctly said it, that the stories now, they, they need something fresh and we have what that fresh thing is. And when, I love to tell my students, we should never look down on ourselves as Africans because this is really where it's going to be kicking <laughs> in this next, uh, the next few decades. Uh, and not just that, as you've correctly said, our population is larger when our population is young. So that means a larger workforce. I love that. Uh, but now, Benjamin, now let's come to the classroom because you are training. And I love what you said. The reason you came into training is because there's a skills gap. You know, there's a skills gap that you that you found. Uh, you know, as you are trying to do your work out there. Um, what has your experience been like training the young creatives, the ones that want to come into uh, animation? And what would you say to one that wants to come on board? What kind of person should come to study uh, in a creative um, media school or creative tech school like ours? Um, it's good to also mention that in today's world, we are no longer just uh, limited to working in one location. The reason your uh, industry kept making money is because you could work from anywhere. Uh, you, today, we, we can have international, uh, we can have global collaborations. We can be working on a film or a, or a song or, a, or design work or animation film from here and you're collaborating with somebody in Japan. So uh, talk to me a little about now me getting in. You're now, we've come to the classroom. So uh, just to add on to what you just said, even right now, okay, yeah. I could be somewhere in the South China Seas, we are not even together, but you're having this meeting. Right? So the technology out there is the one that is allowing us to be able to do this. The digital revolution has really helped us. And yeah. now when it comes to the creative uh, industry itself, somebody wants to learn, keyword there is creative because number one, we can't teach you how to be creative. That one we cannot. We can only give you the skills. So you have to have the passion. You have to have the skill and the drive for it. So if you just force yourself, and I've seen some students try to force themselves into it, and they are actually end up suffering and end up dropping because it's something that has to be new. You have to have the passion. You have to have the passion, you have to have the drive. From there now, you'll be able to learn the skills that are necessary for whichever industry that you've chosen. And you'll notice they are so interconnected. They are very interconnected. So you cannot say you're going to do animation without a bit of music. 
You cannot say you're going to do a bit of music without understanding a bit of maybe graphic design, a bit of editing, a bit of everything, uh, especially. So they are very interconnected and the student has to have the passion. The passion must be there and the drive and the focus because it's actually hard work because most of them find out that later when they come, they find out that it's not as easy uh, as they thought. I usually give them the analogy of a cake. Okay, I love eating cake. But when you're eating cake, at times you assume the baker enjoyed themselves baking it as you're enjoying yourself eating it. Until you realize the baking process, there's a lot of heat and hard work involved. So it's the same with the creative industry. They have to be creative and have the passion in the drive. Uh, very good, very good. Um, I like that analogy. There's a very big difference between uh, the experience baking the cake and the taste in eating the cake. You know, so we will require our discipline, our um, focus, our ability to stretch, you know, and give it our best, uh, even if what we are creating. You know, I sat and watched you uh, some some time back, you know, and you were taking students through, we had an open day and you're taking students through the process of just modeling in animation, in 3D animation. And I left that workshop with a new respect for whoever creates cartoons. You know, and we see the cartoon running. <laughs> we think creating it is as easy. It is a lot of work. I just said, I hope everybody that signs up for this understands it takes work. It takes work before it can form into that person that is moving, you know? And so the same skills we need in any other career are required in creative media careers. The same kind of soft skills, the same kind of discipline, the same ability to communicate, the same ability to uh, go the extra mile, the same ability to uh, be versatile, and uh, the same ability to uh, have this hunger for growth and learning, you know, the proper communication skills, proper packaging, you know, uh, ensuring that you're able to market yourself. So indeed, and I think Mr. Keshuke is one who's mentioned how many people who sometimes end up in the creative media industry can be introverted. But I love to tell my students, no matter how introverted you are, you have a voice and you've got to use it in the workplace. And so you still have to market that art. You still have to market um, that skill that you have. None of us is exempted from that. And so I love to hear you say, and use that analogy, you, uh, you want to bake the cake, <laughs> you enjoy the cake, but roll up your sleeves because it's going to take work to now make sure we create that beautiful cake. Thank you so very much. Uh, so I just want to thank all the panelists for this. And I know we're going to go into some questions uh, now, but thank you so much for those amazing insights. Um, let me see if we have um, some questions. Let me see there. So I have uh, Patricia Jage. hello. Thank you for this. Uh, thank you, Mr. Kishoki. How do I tell if my child is serious about pursuing a career in the creative space or it is just a hobby? <laughs> That's a good one. How do I know whether to invest in their dreams or to just wait for them to grow out of it? <laughs> I think many parents sometimes are hoping this person will grow out of this. So Mr. Kishoki, there's that. Yeah, yeah, I, yes, I, I've seen that question. Um, so Patricia, I, I can understand uh, your uh, your dilemma. Um, sometimes it's very, very difficult to kind of uh, differentiate between uh, just curiosity and uh, hobby and a real serious, um, you know, uh, gift or engagement desire. Like Mwali um, Benjamin, he talked about passion. So I think for you to resolve that is uh, expose, um, I don't know how old they are. Uh, if they are already ex high school, I think this is the right time for them to put their foot down. They cannot just keep selecting and uh, hoping and wishing. Um, of course, sometimes parents create a very comfortable environment so that uh, which then matches laziness. Uh, but Molly Benjamin has really said, whatever your choice, you've got to do to be ready to do the hard work um in the last one uh, two years now going to three years i have hosted 110 one hour gg report 
and it's a lot of hard work. I have to fight against every week and uh, I interview all kinds of people and I have to concentrate. So here I am, you know, at the other tail end of my career, uh, working my socks off in uh, TV. Um, and, and not not necessarily because I get paid for this. I actually, I, I do that to contribute to make sure that uh, we are running. So the hard work must be there. So I think get these kids out here, send them to the school, let them spend a week or one semester, even if they drop, that's not a problem. By the time they meet uh, Benjamin and uh, Shiko and Brian, and the other, they can determine. So there is that space for experimenting. So um, so that's very, very important. But just like I said, um, it, it is okay for a parent to be worried about uh, whether really their child uh, is going to make something out of themselves. And so the way to buttress that is let them do uh, as many, let them build a real, I think you need to encourage them to build a, a, a platform and uh, develop what you, I would call lifelong learning. One of the things that I've encouraged people in my house and my family, I have, as you can see, I have books behind here. I have almost 200 books and I encourage them to read. So they read across the board, marketing, uh, IT, autobiographies. I have uh, uh, Steve Jobs autobiography, the 600 page autobiography, which my children have read. So, so give them that wide uh, view of life. Uh, and that way then, uh, you know, they can self-reflect and, uh, and also not be naive and following uh, all their classmates, their age mates, their schoolmates who are excited about all kinds of things. So encourage them to put their foot down something. If you see them complaining, uh, they, are, they are only two reasons. Either they are lazy or they are not serious. So, and then don't throw away your good money against uh, bad ideas. So, <laughs> so make sure that... Uh, uh, you follow through. But again, don't neglect your duty to be uh, 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 judicious. Uh, I had to go to ADMI myself, uh, uh, you know, when Jerry signed up and just confirm that this guy is actually learning and, and that it's happening. In the university, I tell you the truth is, kids, parents pay up fees. We are talking about university, you know, very expensive courses, but they never show up to check. So they find out after four years that their kid has only done two semesters, but they are paid for the eight semesters. Uh, so uh, why? Because they didn't pay attention. So you have to work with your child. Uh, you cannot neglect your parenting duty, uh, but it is hope. So that's that's absolutely amazing. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much for that. Thank you very much. I love what you've just said also about con the creative, that learning, uh, continuous learning for the child, which is a key thing they will need in life. I love the, you know, the, the library behind you, <laughs> that, that they know that if they can get that reading culture and learning culture, then they are safe. You know, because it will, it is something for life. I'd like Brian to comment on something because uh, there's something Mr. Geshuki has just said. And it is true about some universities. We've had parents, we've seen even in the media, parents crying and being heartbroken, thinking you're coming for your son's graduation or daughter's graduation to discover this person dropped off. You know, uh, Brian, at ADMI, is that something easy that can happen or are you tracked? <laughs> uh, what I'll say in ADMI, the moment you join uh, ADMI, you know what you want to do and you know what you want to gain from there. Yeah. You can't just join it randomly. And uh, if you drop out, it's because maybe of financial uh, stability. You're not well financially. But in ADMI, I've never heard of such a thing. And people are there because they know what they want to do and where they want to be in future. What happens if you miss a class? If you miss a class, uh, the school is so concerned, they will send a message to you and to your guardian or parent to notify that you missed a class. Yes. yes. And they will also call you continue <laughs> missing classes. Yes, you know, I like to tell our young adults that come to ADMI that we want you to carry yourselves as professionals and uh, we will treat you as professionals. But if you choose not to behave as one, then you will have the uncomfortable situation where you're not treated as a child and we have to call your guardian and let them know you didn't show up for uh, a course. 
So, but I love that, that pay attention, pay attention. Brian, someone had asked you something, Some uh, actually it was from Patricia as well. Uh, she says, so happy to hear a young man getting relevant industry skills and so excited to join the creative industry. Brian, what communities can young people join to engage with like-minded people like you? Where would they meet someone like you? Uh, I'll say in the industry, first of all, you'll find them in the, at ADMI. <laughs> and second of all, I'll say, you know, when you work with the five folds, you become the sixth fold. And when you work with five wise men, you become the sixth wise man. Yeah. So apparently when uh, you want to uh, find people like me, yeah. uh, for sure, go to ADMI or any other campus yeah. that you think your child wants to become a creative or wants to pursue any other career. But in campus, you find uh, communities that people can engage in people like me. Yeah. And I'll say, um, you know, um, don't wait till the child comes. They can actually come and visit ADMI. And uh, our career um, advisors also can be able to just walk them through what to expect to find at ADMI. Uh, we're currently uh, doing our September intake. And so uh, it's still open. And uh, so you're very, very welcome if you want to just come and uh, see the school, see the facilities. And um, there really is a, see, like there's, it's like a creative hub. I, I love ADMI because I'm a creative myself. I'm a singer and a songwriter as well. So just being in that space kind of, you know, gets your creative juices flowing. Uh, so we welcome you also to visit us at the campus. Uh, but also um, I can see uh, there is uh, Irene Will is saying something beautiful that ADMI has indeed done a good job in building the confidence and creativity of the young minds. That was very composed, Brian. Something for Brian right there. Uh, let me see who else we have. Thank you so much, Irene. Uh, then there is Helen uh, Mora. She says, my son in semester five diploma in animation, is in semester five diploma in animation. And I can attest that it takes a lot of work to create an animation. He also loves creative writing and is very good at it. As he completes his coursework, do you advise them on what sort of company or firm to get into for the internship that will advance their passion or even how to start their own studio. So I can comment on the on internship. I'd like uh, Benjamin to talk a little about the conversations they have around uh, what it takes to start their own studio. But for the internship, one thing we do guarantee for our diploma uh, students that as long as they do pass their diploma, uh, their coursework, that they are going to go on internship. And uh, we go out of our way through our placement office to actually uh, seek out internship opportunities for them. It is a competitive process. That is where we also do the course that I train, which is the career launchpad course, where we train them and equip them for the workplace, as well as uh, for the job search process. So we teach them how to create LinkedIn profiles, how to uh, come up with a good CV that uh, is able to market them, how to do an interview, because then, and also create their portfolios to showcase their work which then they use when they, it is time for them now to go out there and apply for jobs, to apply for internships. So by the time your son now is going to be finishing his semester five, he is going to have um, uh, created his uh, LinkedIn profile. He's going to have created his portfolio. He's also going to be able to, he'll have a good CV that is going to then be shared with our placement office, who will then share it out with our employer partners. We have several employer partners in all the different fields that we are training in, where then he would go for three months um, for internship. And by the time he's done with that, then now he's ready to graduate. And often what we find uh, when they go there and do very well, many of them get retained by those particular organizations. Now, during COVID, of course, it was a little more different because uh, organizations were quite stretched financially. But generally, a lot of our alumni have found work through ADMI uh, partnerships and uh, or even through the internships they go through. Uh, Benjamin, maybe you can talk a little about portfolio development and also what you talk about when it comes to uh, ideas about starting their own studios. Sorry, you're muted. Please unmute. Technological challenges for the older generation. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, 
in terms of professional portfolio, that conversation starts right at semester one. Mm -hmm. um, every unit we do is a project. It's actually something that should go towards their portfolio. So we really discuss heavily. We are heavy on portfolio because that's the first thing that people are going to be able to see. So, and as we train them, we train them to be like freelancers. First of all, what you're training people to do at ADMI, especially, let me talk about the 3D space. We space, we train them as a generalist, 3D generalists, not specialists. Generalists are more sought after than specialists because they can be able to do more. As uh, uh, the parent there, Mr. Ishuke said, you need different skills. So we make sure they are generalists so that they can have quite a number of skills to offer. And in the country, because of uh, we are lacking enough people to do this work, so you end up wearing several hats. So we train them to be more of freelance artists, skilled artists. And then by the time they go to Shiko's class, they are doing their soft skills and all that. They also learn how to communicate with different people, even looking for employment, writing CVs and all that. So we train them for both areas. Now, if you cannot be a good freelancer, then you cannot be employed. Because for us, our work is actually 24 hours. So there is nothing like I cannot be a freelancer, but I just want employment. Nobody's going to employ you. You have to be a freelancer first. They have to see what you're doing first for them to actually employ you. So you're a freelancer and also you're employed. But the, uh, the best thing is to have your own studio, grow from there. And we usually have a lot of that discussion. And on top of that, I'm also a member of uh, A3K, uh, the uh, Artist Association of Kenya. And we bring all our students on board. We make sure they're on board. And once they join A3K, we also have our WhatsApp groups and our communication areas. They can see all the jobs that are coming in. They can see all the opportunities that are coming in. All major studios are represented there. Uh, all major, uh, maybe uh, people who fund are also represented there. So it's easy for them to see every opportunity that is open to them within the country and beyond our borders. All right, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I have a comment from Maureen. I love it. ADMI creates an environment for our children and creatives to love what they do and do what they love. <laughs> that is excellent. Thank you so much for that. Now, our time is uh, fast spent, so I think I will... I do not seem to have another question in the chat. Um, however, I would love to have our panelists give us uh, their closing remarks, their parting shot. Uh, what would you like to leave um, with our audience today? Uh, we will start again with uh, Brian, then we will go to our parent, then we will go to my colleague, and then I will wind up. Uh, what I'll say is yeah. the webinar. Uh, as a student at ADMI, and for the parents who are listening and watching us right now, uh, if your child has told you he or she wants to do uh, the film and TV course or any other course, give them a chance. And because it's what they want, don't uh, hinder them on what they don't want and give them what they don't want. Yes. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <laughs> don't fail to give them what they want and then insist on giving them what they don't want. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that, Brian. I think you also forgot to say that uh, you and your colleagues in the FTV have been involved in very successful uh, film projects, award-winning projects. These are student-produced award-winning uh, film projects uh, in, in between last year and this year. And so we're very, very proud of what you're doing and the other students as well. Well done. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Gishuke. Um, okay, I think, um, yeah. So I, I think, um, one of the things that uh, we, is, is, is still a puzzle for me is, um, you know, connecting passion and profession. Uh, but I also must also add a, a, a little bit of a disclaimer. Um, while passion is a very great thing, um, we still need uh, people to apply themselves. Uh, don't forget that the old careers are the most, um, uh, the, the millionaire making careers. I mean, we talk about uh, the billionaires in this country are in the cement uh, and steel industry. We have tax and corporate law. We have research scientists. And of course, we still have millionaires who are album, uh, record-selling album. 
So I think as people think about uh, the art and the creative, they need to know that uh, put your foot elsewhere as well, uh, become an entrepreneur, learn management, uh, so that I think there, there's a disconnect and I would like to suggest that ADMI ensure there is a, a management unit because most of these guys with their very, very good product, they still, uh, they do not have the, they, they lack in the area of management running a small enterprise. And so I think that for me is, uh, is important. So let's encourage the students to build, like I said, real more holes uh, and get all the skills you need so that you can be a success. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Ensure that we and we do have a course on entrepreneurship that uh, we have introduced. So indeed, that will really help uh, because the, whichever skill you are, I like to say, even if you're a plumber, if you're the best plumber, you can become a millionaire. It's just bit by bit until you get there. So the key thing is that uh, how to be able to trade with your skill. And thank you very much. The very useful insights. Thank you, uh, Benjamin. Uh, last. Uh, words for today <laughs> yeah um so i would reiterate what you said and what uh, mr Gichoke has said that yes a enterprise and being an entrepreneur is you're selling a skill so whatever skill that you have you can use your entrepreneur or business skills to sell it creative arts is a skill just like any other and most parents are coming to the realization that it can also make money it's also it's also a business and a very lucrative business at that so um, the future is opening up. We are getting faster machines, better phones, cheaper phones. Everybody has a handset. So creative media and technology has changed the way we make and consume uh, this kind of media. So what is going to happen is that the future, the future is going to be for those who can create this kind of content, package it in a way that the audience can interact with it. And then they'll make a major impact in the world because it's a growing area when it comes to creative media and entertainment. So they need to look at how broad it is. The misconception has been that creative uh, talents are for those who failed in school. It is far from the truth. It is an area for geniuses have gone into it, and they are making money as they go along. So it's just a career like any other, and parents need to understand that, and I'm happy that they're understanding that as we go forward. So it's an area to jump into Alina. Yeah, very good. Thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you so much. I think we have a comment that I have, may not have seen. Uh, Helen says, I attest that ADMI is a great school for the creatives. Our experience has been wonderful. We love that kind of feedback. We are so grateful for that. Thank you. Thank you for trusting us with your children. Um, the reality is that in today's world, all of us are controlled by these gadgets. All of us are looking at our phone, consuming media, consuming information, and the people that are going to create for those spaces where the whole world's attention is today are the people who are going to be making money, whether they are going to be creating the systems that allow them to work or creating the content that uh, is consumed on those very gadgets. So in the creative careers that we have, the creative media industry is only going to keep growing and growing and growing. And if your child has chosen to enter into that space, then do not be afraid because that is the next frontier today. Here in Africa and beyond, the architect, the doctor, the engineer, the teacher, all of us have to become digital uh, digitally savvy and we do need this uh, platforms and this content to market whatever it is we have yeah. and the people that will do it for us are the Bryans, the other filmmakers, the mm -hmm. Benjamins, the designers, the musicians. These are the ones that will connect all of it in this global world that we all find ourselves in. So thank you very much for joining us today. It has been an absolute pleasure to be your host today. Uh, I would like you to know that uh, we are, of course, at ADMI. Welcome you to come and visit us and come and see the campus for those of you who have not been here. We are, as I said, are still on have our September intake uh, ongoing. So you could bring your child 
come and visit. Our career advisors can take you around and you can see the campus for yourself. You can get to see the kind of state of the art equipment that we have and also sit down with somebody in the field your child wants to go in and then have a real discussion that may bring, bring you some light and some comfort in knowing that this is the right step for your child. Thank you for joining us very much. I want to give a very special thank you to our panelists, our student Brian, thank you so much. Uh, my colleague, Benjamin, thank you so much. And a big thank you to our parents that trusted ADMI with your son and now have come on board to speak to us today. Thank you very much. It has been a, a pleasure and an honor for me to host you today. So thank you everybody. And let's call it a day today. Bye-bye for now. God bless. Amen. Wow.